Hi, I'm James Brooks, and welcome to From the Factory Floor, a conversational podcast about all things startup and tech, brought to you by the folks at the startupfactory.tech. So, after a little bit of a hiatus, I think, welcome back to From the Factory Floor. Um, as ever, these days, joined by Ian, who's not melted on the seaside or escaped to the beach. <laughs> Indeed, I'm still here at my desk, grafting away, fella. Yeah, I don't know how you're doing that in this heat. I mean, I think we're all here, but um, very <laughs> kind. But this week, very kindly joined by the chaps from Fuzzy Labs, Matt and Tom. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Good to be here. Thanks for having us. No, thanks for joining us. So, I mean, I know we've uh, all known each other for uh, a good couple of years now, both... Um, obviously for you guys as Fuzzy Labs and beforehand. So, um, Matt, do you want to just give us a quick intro to you, what you guys do, and then obviously, Tom, just do the same after. (laughs) Yeah, so, I mean, not only have Tom and I known each other for a a good few years before we went on this this endeavour, this Fuzzy Labs journey, but also, I mean, we, um, James and and Ian, we've we've Mm. both known from our previous careers, and so, yeah, I mean, my, my background is in software engineering, and that's what I've been doing for more years than I can remember now. And then Fuzzy Lab started when Tom and I, at um, a hipster cafe in Levenshume, sat down and, and said, okay, we, let, let's try and do something together. And um, we, we talked about DevOps, we talked about AI, um, and then we ended up building initially an AI company, that, that's what we called it, which was a bit vague. Um, and, and since then, it's maybe become less vague, and we'll talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, AI is obviously it's a lot of the big things that have happened, and so I think a lot of the work we've done together has been around AI, and obviously the growth of that. I mean, Tom, do you want to give a, again just for yourself a very quick intro? Yeah, I mean, as as Matt is, I am also a nerd. Um, started my career as what was used to be called a system administrator. Spent a lot of time in data centers, being cold looking at black screens with white text, um, that kind of thing. And that then developed, moved into cloud and DevOps. And then I learned to program and become more efficient at things. And so I spent probably the last 10 or so years, probably more now, doing specializing in that, which is where I met Matt and um, yourself and Ian at our, our previous previous place of, of work, which was great. We had some good times, just, you know, really built our credibility, um, got our confidence up, made some great clients and then, um, I always, I always had a, you know, I was, always wanted to try and do my own thing, um, and uh, been chatting with people for a few years. And yeah, as as Matt says, the the time seemed right um, after a few of these chats, and we said let's just give it a go. And and um, yeah, we sat down just over two years ago now with a, a, you know, we we quit quit the job, and Monday morning was like, WTF are we going to do today? What's the plan? <laughs> and we figured it out from there. <laughs> So what was the where was the serendipity? Because like you say, I think the, uh, the the collision of kind of talent, vision, personal ambition. You you both got that in bundles. But across this uh, romantic coffee, this hipster venue in in Levinshue, where, where was the serendipity? And what made you decide to get together? Yeah, I, I mean, f- certainly for me. Firstly, I'd reached a point in my career where I felt like realistically I couldn't move forward, I couldn't grow without trying to do something of this magnitude. And furthermore, it was probably the stage in my life where if not now, then never. Mm. So so that timing wise, that that worked out. Um, I mean, I don't know what about Tom's perspective. Was it similar? Yeah, I I, I mean, I you know, started, tried to start something a, a year or two before and it, it didn't quite work out. Um, and then I'd sort of gone back to the, the kinds of things I was doing, but I always wanted to try again. And um, I mean, for me, I always, you know, I like I like people that are different. I like interesting people. I like people that think a bit differently. And Matt and I, we'd always had a similar sense of humor. We still do, like a similar strange sense of humor. Um, you know, we always enjoyed being together and... Um, we didn't work together. We didn't actually work together that closely on, on the projects, but on the occasions we did, I was like, oh yeah, I like how this guy thinks. Yeah. I, like I can work, I can work with this guy. You know, we, we, we get on well together. And, yeah. um, and I'd see, and like for, for me, I'd always, since I'd known Matt, I'd seen him 
progress or like always look to improve from you know this this story of like when I first met Matt, it was this like ultra nerd in a trench coat. I'm and, still an ultra nerd, Tom. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, and he's yeah. still got the trench coat in his cupboard. Well, you present <laughs> yourself now, you know, in a completely different way. And like, you know, you wouldn't speak to anybody really. Like, you were really, really meek. And then I watched this development, you know, to like being a team lead and starting to dress nice and getting a nice apartment, getting a girlfriend, and then like, should we start a business? And I was like, yeah, let's let's do it. Yeah, I know what you mean, Tom. I think I think Mark, you've always. Um... I've always been really curious and, you know, admired you in terms of your, your ability, how you conduct yourself. And, and the sense of humour is an interesting point, Tom, in terms of how people come together, because a lot of the research around started, uh, founded duos, kind of, you know, you look back at the, the comedy duos. So I kind of think, are these two the French and Saunders? Are they the belushi and dan Aykroyd, or are they the reeves and mortimer of the uh, of the manchester tech scene but you do seem to collide nicely together personally at the the conversation seems to flow easily between you i'm not saying you finish each other's sentences off but how, how do you kind of work together how does the thinking gel I mean, what, what Tom said earlier that we previously, we hadn't worked together closely, even though we were at the same company. It's a very interesting observation. But I think that meant at that time, before we started this, we spent most of the time we spent talking to each other was, it was having a laugh. It was joking. It was maybe talking about some things that interested us besides technology as well as tech. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think therefore we, it was an unknown, probably, how we would work together, how we would gel. And we've, for me, I feel like we've made it up as we went along. I, I don't know. Um, it often feels like that's probably the best way of doing things because you know we've we've worked with sort of founder duos before, like you know whether it's a tech business or sort of that more of the commercial side. And it almost is that level of having to gel on a personal level is almost a prerequisite of actually being able to then run a business together. And that level of, like, say, the humour and being able to actually get on as individuals to then actually start a company is probably one of the key tenets of actually being a fan of the duo. Yeah, I, mean, I think just to Ian's point, I mean, the way the way that I think the communication tends to work well for us is um, typically when we're when we're thinking a bit differently, when we're not trying that hard. So I think when we when we sit together and go, well, we need to do this task sometimes we can get a bit stuck because we're both procrastinators. You know, we'll both really dig into the detail and one of us needs to go, actually, you know, let's, you know, pick your head out of it. And this is the, this is the big picture of it. Um, but I think some, I think, but when we start to think a bit differently and we start to talk about random topics or things we're interested in, that's when the creativity really comes. Um, and the, the thing that we, that we'll start to talk about later on is this, this new niche that we're working on. You know, the, the idea for that came sat in the courtyard outside TSF's office. And it's just a really nice vibe. And we just, you know, started talking about farming and sheep. And then all of a sudden we had this crazy idea about, you know, herding machine learning models. And this is going to be our new brand going forward. So I think it's fascinating because I think a lot of the the founder Jews when that we've worked with, as James just referenced, they kind of came together to Matt's point, let's give it a go. And then it just clicked. So I think I think there's a chemistry here which just works. And the combination of intelligent people working hard, having ambition, kind of you, you work at it. And, and there is no science to it. It, it. it is odd. I think all the – when I look back and, and some of the, the, the kind of stuff I've done with people, it, it just clicks. And it, there's, there's, it, it's weird, isn't it? The, the magic just happens. But I think what I also see in you two is one of the classic things for founder duos that – you're hugely complementary to each other around blind spots, about knowledge spots, and and you, you know your different personalities. So I think that, that there's a real good complementary fit on on two or three levels. Yeah, and I think the, the interesting thing with that is we're, we're figuring that out as we go. Like we're learning a lot about ourselves individually and about each other and what our strengths are. And we've been talking quite a lot recently about those strengths and what what we're good at and what we're not good at. And figuring out, you know, who else we need to add to the team to to really really bring that on. But I think it's been, yeah. What the biggest learning for me is 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 knowing what what I'm good at um, in this and what and what I shouldn't be focusing my time on because I'm not. I don't think I'm really a great implementer. 
I, like I could think I've, I'm quite I'm good at thinking about the strategy and what we need to do and I've, I've got that that vision but in terms of actually doing it I just I sometimes I, I quite often I get blocked whereas I think Matt is really really good at the implementation side of things you know if he's got a task to do he'll absolutely nail it and I I know and I always trust Matt you know if there's a problem that needs solving I know Matt can solve it there's no problem out there you can't figure out so far <laughs> so far <laughs> well, I mean it's interesting I mean one of the things you mentioned there Tom was obviously the you know knowing what you're good at knowing what Matt's good at knowing what knowing what you both aren't good at I guess and obviously part of that then comes to obviously like I say getting the wider team and the bigger team how is it you almost as a duo try and work out those big decisions around say recruitment or just the sort of direction of business or clients and try and also make that work for both of you and what you both want to be doing, considering the strengths and weaknesses. It, it absolutely comes from knowing one's strengths and weaknesses. And so, I don't know, we've, we've in the last few months, differentiated considerably in terms of how we, um, where, where our responsibilities lie. And I think that that's come from, months before of, of learning i mean i think tom tom has been overly complimentary towards my character so far on this but from my point of view looking at tom i think there's there are things he'll point out insights he'll have that i think damn how, how didn't i how, how did i miss that how did i not realize that how did i not think of it in that way and you know i mean to give examples it could be on how we advertise how we present our services how we talk about them it could be about how we approach recruitment. Um, and so I think the only thing I can say is it's been now two years of figuring out for me what I'm good at and what I'm not good at, what Tom's good at. And then slowly there's this natural, I think there's a natural um, interplay that's arisen where I maybe I won't push Tom on certain things because I think actually he's probably right on that. His instinct is probably right there. I'll, I'm happy with that. Um, and then I think it goes both ways as well. That's, that's an interesting point there, Matt, because I think trust and respect in any relationship are obviously important. So know, knowing when to kind of stop and listen to Tom, you know, the old phrase, two heads are better than one, uh, obviously comes up to mind. But a, a bit of tension is no bad thing, you know, and, and I think that's how you navigate that. Knowing when to step back, I think, is is, is also quite important for just the longevity of the relationship. I think that the merits and recognising the merits of each viewpoint, but kind of knowing when to step down and say, well, actually, that's probably a better decision and an equally a bit of a eureka moment. You go, damn, I've got to do better next time. That, that's no bad thing either. Yeah, I think we when we when we discuss important topics, I think we naturally um, detect each other's concerns and, um, you know, we have quite a respectful conversation and we'll, we'll both, you know, we'll debate the point, but we, I think we both can see each other's point very quickly. Um, we, you know, with this, it's not, we, I, very, I can't even think of a situation when one of us has got a point and someone goes, no, I, I don't, no, I don't agree. I don't see that point at all. We both always see each other's side of it and we'll logically go, yes, okay, on balance, this is the way to go. Um, so but there's, it's quite rare that I, mean, I can't even think of a situation where we've had that kind of conflict over over yeah. big decisions. Little stuff yeah. we argue about, um, you know, you know, colours of logos or whatever. But it's like, <laughs> <laughs> what colour should the bike shed be? I mean, sometimes this works against us, though, because as Tom says, we're procrastinators. So if we don't keep ourselves in check, we can spend a very long time discussing every possible approach to a problem that in the grand scheme of things, probably doesn't really warrant that, that level of discussion. <laughs> well, it's well, not that's it, Matt. it comes back to humour. You, you kind of both know that, so hopefully someone will stop you going down the rabbit hole eventually. Um, Tom, you referenced the kind of a, a new direction that Fuzzy Labs uh, are going in. Tell us a little bit more about that and, and again, how you've, you've, you've pivoted and how you've both aligned to that decision. Because it's, It sounds pretty exciting what you discussed with me previously. Yeah, well, we like I said, we we sat down two years ago, and it was like, you know, what are we doing? So, and we we our strapline was and still is AI for everybody, which is a pretty bold claim for a two man band at the time, as it was. But we've you know we we and our, our aim was to become credible experts in machine learning and AI and help people implement it. 
and we've we've done that for two years, and we've you know we've developed we're successful. We've had we've been very busy with clients, but I think after the start of this year, we were you know busy learning how to sell, get clients, build the pipeline, and we were we we got to a point when we were doing well and we were busy. But after the first three or four months of this year, we realized we were so busy that we just didn't have time to think about anything else. And the projects we're working on were so diverse in terms of the problem space and the kinds of solution that we weren't being very efficient in terms of what we were delivering and what we we're selling. So we quite quickly said to ourselves, with this, you know, we could keep carrying on and we'd, you know, commercially be probably probably do quite well and we could bring more people in to help. But you know, it wasn't a particularly enjoyable way of working. So we said, well, let's, you know, we need to be more efficient. We need to be known for doing something more specific. And so, you know, we'd spent a bit of time doing our research. We had like a research document of ideas. But the thing that we've narrowed in on is this area that's known as MLOps, so machine learning operations, which is a, a, it's in concept similar to DevOps that a lot of people are familiar with, which is this tooling and process that, you know, came started to come about 10 years ago to allow software to be deployed efficiently into production you know you used to have this wall of a developer would build a thing give it to the operations person it didn't work it would go backwards and forwards all the time and devops fixed that and devops is a known thing and most businesses accept that that's that's what they what, what they want but ML, machine learning is at the same point now that devops was 10 years ago so you've got data scientists smart people building machine learning models but they work on their machine well, but they've got the same issue getting them to into production and, and efficiently managing them. And our pivot, our niche now is going to be on focusing on building machine learning uh, MLOps tools. And it, it's plays to our strengths because it's a tech product. So previously we were selling the benefits of AI to various industries, marketing, finance, medical, all these things, you know, and we're, we're not experts in those domains, but we are experts in technical delivery and talking to technical people and that's where mlops i think really plays to our strengths and it's a really emerging space so there's a graph that we've thought you know flies around but you look at the amount of mentions of, of mlops over the last couple of years and it's gone from virtually nothing to a significant number and so there's a real opportunity for us to um we're not the only ones doing this but there's a real opportunity for us to, to sort of spread our own message on our, our own version of it and put our own twist on it so, so Matt, given to your point that as a founder duo, I think you've both got latent curiosity, interest, you've researched it, but you're both procrastinators. Tell a little bit about the timeline, decision-making progress, how you've refined this, and, and when can we expect to see it? Well, I, I'd say it came out of out of chaos, like a, a lot of good things come from come from a place of chaos. So if I describe... I'm using chaos to describe where the business was at the beginning of this year in that we were doing plenty of work and, you know, we, we were making money. We were doing fine commercially, but it was probably too much and we were spreading ourselves too thin. And, you know, Tom said, the, I underlined the importance of playing to your strengths. I think when you try and do things that, don't play to your strengths it can be very stressful it's it's demanding psychologically and so and you know particularly for for founders who are often perfectionists we want to do a good job of this thing but maybe this thing isn't the thing we're best at um and then the imagine the psychological burden of of trying to do that so initially i think tom and i were probably both really quite quite stressed by all of this in at at, that time so when we started this discussion, it came from a place of chaos and a little bit of stress and a little bit of, oh, no, this isn't really sustainable for us personally. What are we going to do? From there, I guess that probably most probably outweighed the procrastination for a little while. <laughs> that That's safe to say. And then we started our research. But then, yeah, the procrastination still kicks in right because okay you're doing all this research now you realize this is a huge space there's so much stuff out there where do you even begin and you try to explore all of the different directions that that goes in um that in the mlops world rather than focusing and saying okay can we pick one thing and try that mm. um yeah it's a good lesson for startups generally though matt because i think as, as, as tom said you know, you'd, you'd built the brand, you'd built your relationship, you'd worked out what go-to-market looked like and you were successful. And then you wanted to change all that and, and do something different. I think that 
that degree of innovation is really important lesson for any startup, let alone a founder duo, that don't get complacent, don't get comfortable just because the revenue's coming in and you've got a few quid in the bank. Um, so again, it's it's healthy. I think there's there's a good takeaway there for any startup. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and That's I suppose what... to answer when when can we expect it? That was your other question. Yeah. Um, we're saying September. Yeah, well, I mean, we've what we're working on internally, uh, which I think is very exciting. We have narrowed our focus onto Google Cloud Platform, and what we want to do is be really good at doing ML ops on Google's Cloud Platform. We are putting together. We want some to be tools. the best. Matt. We want to be the best. Right. <laughs> Correct. We want to be the best. So That's the perfectionist we know. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're we're working on some really cool tools right now, which will make it easier for teams of data scientists specifically to train and deploy their machine learning models onto Google Cloud. Typically, data scientists aren't cloud engineers; they don't really know that world. So, whatever we can do to bridge that gap that there's a lot of value in that. So we're building that and a lot of content around that. And yeah, it's, it's very exciting. And one final point for me, how much do you kind of socialize how to work? I mean, you connect hugely day to day, Monday to Friday, the chemistry, the excitement, the fun, does that leave the office and, and what do you do together? Not, not a lot to be honest. I mean, we've meet, we've we've made a point recently since since the lockdown because we used to see each other physically every day in the week, um, um, but obviously then we didn't, and we got a bit as we I think we both acknowledged we got a bit complacent. Our relationship definitely suffered as a result. You know, we we forgot to get to know each other properly, and about I don't know what was it six weeks ago, a couple of months, we said you know we started going for lunch. We said we need to do this all the time, like regularly do this, go for lunch, have a nice lunch get to know each other properly, talk about, and we talk about non-work stuff. Anyway, you know, we always, we'll love a sideline. Our Slack, our Slack is ludicrous. Um, <laughs> but I mean, just, just, just to sit and have that face-to-face chat about, you know, how we're feeling about things and personal development, that kind of stuff, I think has been really important. Um, so, yeah, but I, I mean, outside of that, we, we've not seen each other that much, to be honest. Although we've, we've, um, we threatened to go for a bike ride together recently because because Matt's got into cycling and I've shown him. I was about to say you've threatened to get him out on the bike on the trails yet, or <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm scared. I've I mean I've seen the kind of mountain biking Tom does and it just, just terrifies me. <laughs> terrifies. No, I've, I've seen some of those videos and uh, you told me some of your injuries in the past, Tom. So uh, <laughs> great trepidation having going down those slopes. Yeah. <laughs> He is copying you one uh, one way though, Tom. I, th- I think I think Matt's grown his hair. For now, I'm booking the haircut for Saturday though. <laughs> the old lockdown haircut. Yeah, well, they, they say if you spend enough time with someone, you you end up kind of thinking like them. And I was wondering whether you're going to clone into a, a, a Tom Mark II there for a while, Matt. But... <laughs> I had sh- I had shoulder length hair when I was in university. <laughs> we were discussing yesterday. We were talking about the the new. We're going to start doing some video content, and I was saying, Matt, we need we need a makeover. We need. I was saying we'll get some stylists in. Matt needs some tattoos <laughs> and a mustache. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a vanity project, then, is it? <laughs> Surely, yeah. That's what it's all about. Well, I wish I'd just videoed the uh, little dance you seemed to be doing in the courtyard yesterday. When uh, did you see that? Said, yeah, someone told me, "Who's that guy dancing?" Oh, it's just Tom. What's he doing? <laughs> I was miming a sheep. Ah, I see. yeah. Yeah, there's a sheep involved. Is, is this related to Clarkson's farm being renewed for a second series or something like that? Or I think well, this, this is this is a good point to kind of um, make as as we wrap it up. The, the introvert extrovert mix between you two is is fairly obvious, um, but you know you're both really nice, easy to talk to guys. When you, Matt, Matt has a, a, a shyness, which once you know you've got through that and, and he trusts you. Um, he's fantastic as all introverts are that uh, their energy flows but um yeah that introvert extrovert you, you see that in the comedy duos you know Morecambe and Wise were, were, were perhaps the most um obvious example of that uh but even back in the day Abbott and Costello were, were kind of the you know there's one straight man and one funny man so Tom do you do more of the commercial stuff and, and Matt is more of the techie in, in the duo because obviously the, the business has that has two key pillars really does that lend itself to a personality naturally uh, we tend to, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm probably more 
naturally interested in people than Matt is. Mm-hmm. Um, and Matt's more interested in the technology than I, I mean, I'm interested in technology, but sure. not at the level that Matt is. I mean, my career was always built on technology. And to be fair, I've, you, you know, maybe describe me as an extrovert. I don't consider myself an extrovert. I think I was much more introvert before I started this. Right. Having done this, I've started to come out of myself a bit more. And um, I get energized now by, you know, having conversations and meeting people and finding out, just going on this journey, you know, talking to other people that are doing similar things. I, I love that. That's to me a thing I never got to do before. I was, you know, just on the machine and just, mm. just looking at the screen. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, it's been an interesting development. And Matt, I mean, if you kind of, if I describe you as the Elon Musk of Fuzzy Labs, that, that's kind of where I, where I see you. Just we're without, we're without the billions and billions of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but it is that, comp- that complimentary fit. I think, you know, we, we know you guys from old. And it, it, for me, it was a, a surprising combination when you got together in, initially. But, you know, the amount of time I've spent with you and been around you, seeing how you, how you click. Um, you know, you obviously have a very good relationship and, and between you, you're on the, on, the, on the verge of creating something very special, I think. I I think it's, uh, yeah, I think it's necessary to have a bit of difference between personalities. I, I think that, that helps it. That there are gaps to be filled in everybody's personality. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think, I think we've covered off everything we said we were going to talk about today, haven't we? Well, but these two obviously want to go out and have lunch together. And then... <laughs> Well, probably, they've got, they've got to go back, 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 back to the route to the cafe in Levenshoe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we've got some good recipes from there. I was going to say you have to get, you know, when obviously Fuzzy Labs is uh, fully taken off, you have to get a blue plaque on the wall there. Fuzzy Labs founded here. <laughs> well, we like Rolls and Royce at the Midland Hotel in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, thank you very much for joining us, guys, today. I know it's uh, a hot day and uh, still so. Yeah, thank you very much, and cheers again, Ian. Yeah, just, just a couple of takeaways from me, really. I think in, in terms of um, other folk thinking about doing a startup, um, it is incredibly lonely. It's hard work. I think reading between the lines, what Matt and Tom have said, that they, they perhaps wouldn't have done this thing if they'd not found each other. So thinking about a co-founder and finding a co-founder as much as your product and your market, I think it's important as much as you, of your startup strategy and and. All joking aside, I'd say choose your co-founder like you choose a spouse. I think look at the softer issues, look at the personality fit, look at how they communicate, the trust and respect that you see between these two fellas. You know, you know that's why the chemistry is special and that makes the the thinking work and and the business work. Tom, and Matt, Tom, how do uh, how do people get hold of Fuzzy Labs? Where where can they contact you? Well, um, our website we've got is. Uh fuzzylabs.ai and um, we, we blog fairly regularly on there. We're also trying to be fairly prolific on LinkedIn with some more casual updates um, or email talk at fuzzylabs.ai. Great, thanks. Cool. Right, thank you very much, guys, and hopefully catch you soon around uh, the office. Yeah, yeah, thanks, James. Look forward to it. Thanks for having us. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. I think that just about wraps things up here. If you have any thoughts or questions on anything we've said today, get in touch, whether that be through our Twitter, at RealTSF, or email at hello at startupfactory.tech or feel free to drop in for a coffee and a chat. As ever, thanks for listening.